Okay. Is that okay? Can I move it down now? Yeah, okay. So let's take a look at some examples and see if we can figure out what's mutually exclusive, what's not. I'm sorry, is there something that needs to be uh, clarified? Okay. So what we're going to take a look at is to determine if these events have that property of being mutually exclusive or not. So let's just say the two events are you roll the dice, you roll them once, okay? The event happens one time. You roll a pair of dice, the sum is a 5. You roll a pair of dice, the sum is a 10. Can those happen at the same time on the same roll? No, they can't, so we would call these mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. You're only going to get one sum when you roll the dice. Okay, let's just say that uh, your lunch contains an orange and your lunch contains a fruit. Can those happen at the same time? Yeah, so those are not mutually exclusive. They could happen at the same time. So I don't know if those are the best examples, but uh, let's, let's try some stuff like cards. Um, let's make these three events. S, the card is a spade. R, the card is red. And F, it's a face card. Which of these three events is mutually exclusive? What did you think, Michael? Yeah, so because the spade is a black card, we cannot be a spade and a red card at the same time. So S and R must be mutually exclusive. They don't happen at the same time. So if we want the probability that we draw one card from the deck, and we want to know, is this, uh, what's the probability that it is a spade or a red card? Then, because they're mutually exclusive, it's just the probability of S plus the probability of R. So how would we, what would the calcul, sorry, what would the uh, probability of S be that you're a spade? One over four is correct. Uh, just a tip for you when you work in probability. Um, you want to reduce your fractions at the very end, because then you'll always have a common denominator. If we're using the same sample space, then we have the same common denominator. So here's what I mean. You're absolutely correct if you said one quarter, but 13 out of 52 means that when I talk about red cards, I'll have the same denominator, same sample space. So um, what's the probability that it's a red card? Right. And there's nothing wrong, again, with you saying that's one quarter plus one half. But now you've got to do a little bit of uh, common denominators and things like that. This is 39 out of 52. This is three quarters. That, of course, does simplify to three quarters. OK, I'm going to let you try this one. Find the probability that the card you've drawn is a spade or a face card. Anybody have any ideas how we can get started? Yeah, so this one's not mutually exclusive. So I have to subtract the probability that they both occur. And uh, that's the probability that it's a spade and a face card. OK, so what's the probability that you're a spade? Yeah, there's 13 out of 52. A face card is 12. And how many spades are face cards? Yeah, there's three spades that are face cards. So here's why we're having to subtract it. In this group, when I counted the spades, I counted three face cards, right? I counted face cards already when I counted the spades. When I counted just the face cards, I counted some spades that were face cards. So there's twice, that's why I have to remove it one time. So I don't double count them. So this will be uh, 22 out of 52, which is 11 out of 26. Okay, so let's just take a, a look here at a pr previous provincial exam question. Okay, so um, number five says, consider the uh, four events shown below involving randomly drawing a card from a deck of 52. Which of the events are mutually exclusive? So let's compare them and see which ones we think uh, are a good candidate. If you're a face card, 
Can you be a heart? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's possible to be a face card like the king of hearts. So it's definitely not A. Okay, what about B? Is it possible to be a face card and a king? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they're the same thing. You have to be a face card if you're a king. Okay, and what about if you're a spade? Is it possible that you're also a heart? No. Nope. No sparks yet in the uh, in the deck of cards. Okay. So C is our answer, but let's confirm too. If we pick D, can you be a spade and a king? Yeah, king of spades, right? So that works. C is definitely our answer. They are mutually exclusive. Okay. So drawing an ace or a red card. I'm going to represent those with A and R. Okay, so let's find some of these probabilities. What's the probability that you draw an ace from a deck of cards? Four. Yeah, four cards in the deck of 52. What about a red card? How many? 26? Yeah. Okay, let's do probability that you are an ace and you are red. What cards am I talking about if you're the ace and you're red? Sorry? Which one? Like which, oh, you got <laughs> mouthful of food. Yes, Nick? Ace of hearts and ace of diamonds is correct. So there's two of them, the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds out of 52. So are these events mutually exclusive? No. Okay. They can happen at the same time. So that means if I need to calculate the probability, it's going to be 4 out of 52 plus 26 out of 52. Take away the overlap. Because I've counted aces, that means I've counted some red cards. So red and aces. And here, I've counted red cards, so that means I've also counted the aces again. So removing any overlap, that's 28 out of 52, which will be uh, 7 out of 13. Okay, so we're going to take a break here and just see uh, exactly what kind of probability this is. Do you think this would be a good game for a casino to play? So what if, the, what if a casino was to say to you, you can win money, and all you have to do is pull an ace or a red card out of the deck? You're in? <laughs> what do you think? Is this a good, good game? Would you play it? What? Well, why is it obvious to you? You're the only one who's answered. Nick, don't be so polite. Why? Your odds of winning are more than 50%, right? Okay, so we're going to do a little experiment here. I'm just going to pause this. Finish this. Okay, so a card is drawn from a standard deck of 52. Determine the probability that a nine of diamonds or a heart is drawn. So let's ask ourselves, is it possible to be the nine of diamonds and a heart at the same time? No, no they're mutually exclusive. So that means my, my probability is just nine of diamonds plus a heart. So that's 14 out of 52 or 7 out of 26. Okay, what if we change the question slightly and we said you must be a 9 or a heart? Okay, is there possible to be a 9 and a heart at the same time? Yes, that is the 9 of hearts. So it's the probability that you're a 9 plus the probability that it's a heart. Ooh, that's a terrible heart, but anyways. Um, minus the probability that you're the 9 of hearts so that it's not double counted. So there are four nines in the deck of 52. There are 13 hearts. And there is only one nine of hearts. Sorry, that should be a 52. Okay, so that means I end up with 16 out of 52. Or four out of 13. Okay. Two dice are rolled. Find the probability that you roll doubles or a sum of six. Okay, so we don't want to draw that whole table out like we did last day with all 36 choices. Let's be a little bit smarter about it. Okay. Is it possible to roll doubles and a six? Yeah. Yeah. Three and three, right? It is possible. Two threes will do it. So they're not mutually exclusive. We need to find the probability that they're doubles. 
plus the probability that it adds up to 6, minus the probability that it is a 3 and a 3. Okay. So I'm not sure if you remember this, but for doubles, there are 6 doubles out of the 36. To add up to 6, it's uh, 1 and 5, 2 and 4, 3 and 3, 4 and 2, 5 and 1. That's 5 out of 36 ways that it would add up to 6. And only one of them is the 3 and 3. So this would be 10 out of 36, or 5 out of 18. Okay. 